Hello and welcome to Bill's Game Day Recap. I'm Alexa Ross in the studio. Thad Brown will join us in just a moment. The Bills had the chance to reach their best record in 16 years as they hosted the 1 and 7 Washington Redskins. Buffalo established an early lead which carried them through to the end. Rookie running back Devin Singletary shined once again with a touchdown in the final minutes of the game, and the Bills came away with a 24 to 9 win over Washington. Thad Brown joins us now from New Era Field. The Bills are 6 and 2. What does that mean looking forward, Thad? Hey, that's a good thing. You know, six and two is great. You know, it's probably more than most Bills fans expected, but I think the, the discussion will continue to be how good is that six and two? You know, the Bills won 24 to nine, but this game was a one score game until there were two and a half minutes to go, and that's become a trend for this team. They don't put bad teams away. They, at least they didn't have to come from behind in this one. Now, on the bright side for the Bills was, of course, Devin Singletary. And after the game, the Hall of Famer Adrian Peterson made sure to stop Singletary to talk to him. He told Singletary that he's got talent, he's got to keep working. Singletary wasn't, you know, too effusive when it comes to how he had a successful day today. Singletary said that just keep working is pretty much what he did, totaling 140 yards combined, receiving and rushing, had a touchdown too. Wasn't anything crazy different than Singletary did today. He just kept working. It was the same. It was the same. I, like I said, I approached it the same. I felt the same coming in. You know what I'm saying? Just, just had more opportunities. Yeah, it's good to have him back healthy. Um, you know, I, again, give credit to the offensive line as well. Um, it's never just one guy. And uh, Devin made some real good runs in there, reading his blocks. And I thought the game plan uh, was a good game plan put together by our coaching staff, Brian Dable and his staff. You know, he did a great job today. But I oh, it's the guys up front, um, you know, the five plus the tight end, whoever's in there. And, um, they, like I said, they did a great job of establishing it early, and we got to continue to finish these runs. And uh, Devin did a good job today, and um, I, I feel like only he's only going to grow and only going to get better. Oh, that's my little homie, man. You know, he worked hard, great kid. You know, he deserved. You know, he deserved whatever he get because he's a humble kid, and he, you know, he. he I like the way how he respect the game. Uh, he's super shifty, man. Um, when someone meets him in the hole, they better come to balance because. Uh, he's got some hips and some wiggle, and, and he makes guys look silly out there. No doubt about that. Now, if Singletary was the positive for the Bills' rushing game today, short yardage was certainly the negative. Frank Gore had five different attempts today on one yard to go, including three times at the goal line, and was stopped on all five. The Bills said that there were so many bodies in the box from Washington's point of view on Washington's defense that it only took one block to miss to follow up the play, and that's what often happened. Now, John Feliciano had the big picture look at the run game, saying that, look, all those third and ones, all those fourth and ones, they hurt a little less because we got the W today, but it certainly gives us something to work on. And this is something the Bills have to address. You can't be a playoff team if you can't count on getting one yard with a play other than a Josh Allen sneak. Give Allen credit, he was pretty good with those today, converting a couple times, including once for a touchdown, but Alexa, the Bills need something else to go to on the ground when it comes to third and fourth and one. I don't think Josh Allen passes or sneaks are going to be able to carry them all the way through in a long playoff run. I could not agree with you more. Sure, wins are wins are wins. There were plenty of bright spots, Devin Singletary being one of the biggest. But overall, this win really wasn't all that pretty. The Bills have had some ugly wins. First, it was the Jets. Then it's Miami. Today, it's Washington. These are some of the worst teams in the league. Sure, this week had the Bills up at halftime. I think it was the first time since the Titans game. But they didn't produce in the third quarter at all again. A third field goal for Washington made it a one-score game. And that's a little too close for comfort against a team that's 1-7. and seven. Not playing four quarters will kill them. We've been talking about that all season. We saw it last week against Philadelphia. Same thing, coming back, second half really, really slow. Today they were able to cushion themselves enough to position themselves ahead of a rookie quarterback and an inept offense. But that's the reason why there were no touchdowns scored on the other side. They need to be better all around if they want to get to the playoffs. The offense needs to step it up. Josh Allen's ball security needs to improve. Nine fumbles in eight games is absolutely unacceptable. The run defense needs to get it together. They did in the second half, but you can't let something like Adrian Peterson run all over you for two quarters. I mean, what happens when you see guys like Nick Chubb next week? They've made some huge improvements when you let, look from last year to this year, but still, I don't know. Something's got to give. 
Yeah, this this is a six and two team that has so many questions. You wonder if Case Keenum had played in this game and the Redskins didn't have the greenest of green rookie quarterback. Does this game play out differently? Are those three field goal drives that Washington had are they all touchdowns? And now we're talking about 21-17, maybe late in the game with Washington in front. So look, the, the Bills have a lot to improve on. The good news is still six and two, and the defense is still very good. Even though Adrian Peterson had the 100 yards in the first half today, they really buckled down the second half. Talked about making some adjustments, and we will get to that a little lot later on in this show. But when it comes to six and two in the locker room after the game, Micah Hyde. He kind of saw the questions coming about the quality of wins, quality of opponents. And the Bills are tired of having to make excuses for winning. I'm done apologizing for ugly wins. To win, we're 6-2. and two. This time last year, we were 2-6. Um, it wasn't you know, too ugly, though, Micah. You guys held them out of the end zone, only nine points, three field goals. That's a, that's a nice win. Yeah, yeah. You know, we, we, did, we did good in the red zone today, which is uh, definitely an uh, accomplishment. I'm not going to apologize for, for winning the game. Um, um, at the end of the day, that's what it's about, and however you can get them. Um, but obviously, you want to always play better because, you know, as things start to tighten up and you play better teams and you get closer to the playoffs and you want to be a playoff caliber team, there are certain things that you can't do to yourself if you want to be able to make a run. The goal at the end of the day is to win. So uh, we did enough to win today, so we played well. Um, six and two halfway through. It's not a bad spot to be in. Uh, still got a lot of season left, though. Six and two could go either way. And Lorenzo Alexander also pointed out after the game that the Bills are in a pretty good spot, not just because they're 6-2, and two, but they're confident right now and they're healthy. And, you know, he added that, look, even though there are problems, he said, quote, when you're learning while you're winning, it certainly is better than learning while losing. It doesn't take a you know, big genius to understand that, but it's an excellent point about how this Bills team is, if they're not dominating, not looking like world beaters in these wins, they are at least hanging on, keeping their season flowing in the right direction, very much in the right direction at 6-2. and two. If they do figure out in the second half, they'll be in a great spot to make something very positive out of 2019. Now let's take a look at some of today's numbers for that. Let's go back to the studio and Alexa. It was a pretty solid day for Josh Allen. He only missed six of his throws. He scored two touchdowns. Devin Singletary, though, he had himself a game. The rookie out of FAU had 140 yards combined and his second career rushing touchdown. Cole Beasley scored a touchdown in his third consecutive game for the first time in his career. Dwayne Haskins made an admirable debut for Washington. He completed 15 of 22 passes, threw for more yards than Josh Allen did. No touchdowns, but... No turnovers either. Veteran running back Adrian Peterson had 18 carries for 108 yards. He was by far the biggest challenge for the Bills defense. And they tallied four sacks by four different players. Alexa, one of the things that I really enjoyed about this game is being on the field to see an Adrian Peterson game. The guy's going to the Hall of Fame, and boy, he looked every bit in his prime, even though today he's 30-whatever, taking on the Bills in the twilight of his career. He looked excellent, and the Bills talked about it after the game, too. Jordan Poyer said that tackling Peterson is one of the three or fourth toughest tackling assignments he's ever had in his NFL career. The Bills were able to figure out a way to solve things in the second half with some major adjustments, but boy, like you've said, Adrian Peterson was sure a headache today. He runs as hard in person and when you watch on film. Like, I mean, the guy runs extremely hard. He runs like a horse. Like that was the first time I ever played him. And there was one play, he, he gashed us up the middle and I'm coming out of the post and it's just me and him. And I, I mean, dang, it's a, hard, it's a hard tackle to make. I played AP for many years in, uh, in Green Bay, and he's running just as hard, if not harder, than what he was then. It, this dude is like hasn't aged. We had to make some halftime adjustments, come out in the second half, and kind of run a, a different defense. And, and like I said, put it, we've made it really played eight man front the, the entire second half, um, just so that guys can be gap sound, and uh, you know guys can play faster. Um, you know when you're eight man front, you're really playing man to man. You know you can play, you can hit your gaps faster. You don't have a whole lot of keys. It came down to just guys fitting to run a lot better, getting off of blocks. Uh, it's not like we made a drastic you when. Know, uh, calls changes or anything. He's playing the same stuff. Uh, guys just were more sound in, in their assignments and, and was able to correct it. Now the Bills have struggled against the run two games in a row now. Maybe that second half is the type of adjustments and the type of changes that could be successful going forward. But like you said, Nick Chubb on the docket next week and then another 
meeting with the Dolphins, who certainly were able to move the ball up here in Orchard Park the week after. The Bills, this is something, at least on defense, they need to get figured out. Maybe those big halftime adjustments were the difference today. Now, again, the Bills, big picture, 6-2, and two, still steamrolling towards a playoff spot. Yes, is it very possible that their playoff uh, appearance will be almost entirely earned based on the soft schedule they have? Absolutely. The Browns lost today, so now that game doesn't look nearly as difficult as it has looked most of the season. Cleveland is 2-6 and six and would fall in the same category, it would seem, as the Washingtons and Cincinnati's and Miami's of the world who are 0-8 or 1-7. and seven. But the Bills have done a good job after this game of focusing on what they have to do going forward, and that's very simple. Keep winning the games that are on the schedule in front of them. Lorenzo Alexander summed it up. We haven't really done anything quite yet. You know, I was telling somebody earlier, I've been on a 6-2 and two team and not make the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And so um, as good as I think we are, we can never assume that we're going to be in the playoffs because we're 6-2 and two and whatever the percentages are. You still have to work on the things, the process, the fundamentals, the little mm -hmm. things that's going to allow you to continue to get better. And I think the other thing to remember about this now, I always say to people that you don't know anything about the NFL until Halloween. Well, we did the tricking or the treating a few days ago. So we know what this league is, and we know what the Bills are right now. They're 6-2 and two in very large part as a product of their schedule. The defense is good. The offense is better. But it still is a long way to go to be a real, legit playoff team. Nothing that happened today against Washington changed that opinion. The Bills will have opportunities to change that opinion going forward. Maybe less so next week against Cleveland, but certainly down the road against Dallas and Baltimore and New England and eventually, very likely, in the playoffs. But for right now, the Bills are a 6-2 and two team that is thanking their lucky stars. The NFL schedule makers put all those patsies in front of them. We'll see if that changes in the next couple weeks. Remember to catch up with me on the News 8 Facebook page coming up in a few minutes. If you have questions, you have thoughts on what we have said tonight, you can talk with me there. I'll be on at about 8 o'clock or a couple minutes after we're done, which is almost 8 o'clock. Alexa, back to you. The Bills are 6-2. and two. That is their best record since 1993. This time last year, the 2 and the 6 were flipped, so it's safe to say there's been a lot of progress over the last 365 days, as Lorenzo Alexander said. There's so much more to go as the Bills fight for a spot in the playoffs. As we say goodnight, the Bills waited patiently to speak with future Hall of Famer Adrian Peterson postgame. He and Frank Gore are widely considered two of the most accomplished veteran running backs in the game right now, so it's really nice to see an exchange like this. He and Devin Singletary also spoke, which is something I'm sure the rookie will never forget. Next week, the Bills travel to Cleveland to face the Browns, who did lose today. It will be one of their run defense's toughest tests yet with guys like Nick Chubb, Dontrell Hilliard, Ernest Johnson. D Until then, thank you so much for watching Bills Game Day Recap. For Thad Brown, I'm Alexa Ross. We'll see you next week.